Now let's go back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 23, which is his body. So the church is his body. Now notice over here, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So the fullness of Jesus Christ himself, his own body, fills up what? Everywhere, all in all. Wow, that's something else. So you got to realize that's why when the Bible says heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool, you got to realize this, that all of creation is part of the body of God himself. It is all part of God's body, which is why uh, I'm not going to get into something really deep here. But if you watch my video, The Shape of the Universe, it shows over in that video, if you watch it, the whole universe is all the clothing of God himself. It's all the clothing of God himself. Why? Because he fills up everything. That's why he says, heaven's my throne, earth is my footstool. That's why the, verse 23 says, filleth all in all. So his, all, his whole body fills everywhere. But wait a minute, this is where it becomes really cool. 22, 23, the church is his body that fills everywhere. If the church is the body of Christ, the church is a spiritual organization. It is not a physical building. That's why I tell you that truly everything in this universe, this universe is truly yours. You have the power with that. So when you pray, you can have access and have God move matter, energy, space, and time. Do you realize what power you're holding in your hands? Again, as I told you before, if you look at the last part of verse 19, well, why is it that anything that I do, then I can't do it? It's because it's according to the working of His mighty power. It's according to how God's power moves. So it's according to His way of doing things, the way He works His power, His will of doing things. You can't go by the flesh. If you go by the flesh, flesh has no power in this universe, no matter how hard your flesh tries, which mankind is doing right now. Trying to build spaceships and satellites, claims that they reach the moon or other parts of the universe. That's where it comes in. Because man at his own flesh, they try to have access everywhere in the universe, but they don't. We do. We do. Only God has the power to do it. All right. Chapter 2, verse 1 now. Chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened. So God made you alive at Ephesians 2, 1. Did you notice that? And you hath he quickened. Quicken means make alive. For some of you who don't know, it means make alive. You he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Why did God make you alive? Because before you were dead. You were dead. Dead, how? In trespasses and sins because of sin. So the idea is this, is that all of inside over here is quickened by the Holy Spirit. Before this quickening, you didn't have the Holy Spirit in you. Okay, so here's the idea. Before you were saved, you didn't have the Holy Spirit inside you, right? Right. Why? Because we read verse Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Remember that? The Holy Spirit came inside you when you believed on Jesus Christ for your salvation. You all remember that? All right. The Holy Spirit, it's a living spirit. It's alive, right? When you got saved, you are made alive. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's inside you. Then that means before you had the Holy Spirit inside you, then you were dead. See, that's the point. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the only thing that's keeping you alive spiritually. So without the Holy Spirit, then you're spiritually dead. That's what it means over here that you are dead. It's not talking about that you're physically dead, that... Uh, you're not functioning. No, your body is alive and kicking, but your spirit is not alive and kicking. It's dead. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's not in there. <laughs> Notice the last part says dead in trespasses and sins. See that? So it's all spiritual. It's referring to your sins. It's not physical or earthly or materialistic. No, it's spiritual sin, spiritually. Now, that you understand that, here comes our good old Calvinist friends. Your Calvinist friends, 
they will claim that this is a passage that proves that man has no free will. Do you see that anywhere in that verse? Did it say that or no? No, you got to be a Calvinist philosopher to uh, create that word and put it inside that verse. But they use man-made logic and philosophical word twists to make you think that way. It never said you have free will, so then this is how they say it. How can a person who is uh, spiritually dead have access to do spiritual things? Did you ever see a dead person do things? No, he's incapable. He's unable to. So that's why they say that you're unable to receive Jesus Christ for your salvation, to have spiritual faith. You're unable, you're incapable. Why? Because the illustration is you're a dead person. A dead person is incapable to do things, himself or herself. See that? See, you have to put logic there, then it makes sense. But if, you, if that logic, if that bias, if that bias totally was out the window, would you have honestly thought that when you read verse 1? That there was no free will? No, you wouldn't have. See, see, that proves biased interpretation versus honest interpretation. You would just honestly thought, hey, I was just spiritually dead before I received Christ for my salvation. It's that simple. doesn't mean that you don't have free will. So this, this is, um, that's their tactic. Now, this is really dumb, all right? You ready for this? If you're so dead to that you cannot receive Jesus Christ, you got to realize this too. You're so dead that you can't even reject Jesus Christ either. What are you talking about? What in the world? So then every time that a person resists or rejects Jesus Christ for salvation, what are you going to call that? My goodness, man. See, I mean, you, a dead man can't reject anything. If you want to argue that a dead man can't receive anything, well, he can't reject either. That's a really dumb argument. It has nothing to do with free choice over here. The point is this. It's more simple than you think. The simple thing is, is that let's say that you're dead, okay? So then there's no Holy Spirit in there. Let, let me make this simple for you. This clears up the Calvinist hellish logic. Why do you call it hellish and damnable? Because that is a hellish doctrine to say that Man has no free choice to receive Christ for his salvation. So if all the people died and went to hell, then basically God's the one that did that. That's right. So that's why it's a very wicked doctrine. It's a hellish doctrine. Charles Wesley, the brother of John Wesley, who was the founder of the Methodist movement, Charles Wesley wrote a whole poem talking about how damnable Calvinism is. People today, they don't have the backbone like old preachers back then. They're very softy and sensitive. They don't like it when I call out John MacArthur, John Piper and all that. They don't like that. Why? Because they think they're the heroes during this COVID-19 and the real evil and enemy is actually the secular government that's going on. But they don't see the evil that's going on amongst Christian churches. That's Satan's deception. Now, let's get back to point over here. Okay, this is known to be a dead person, okay? Why? Because he's dead, fleshly speaking, or spiritually? Spiritually, right? Spiritually, he's dead. That's the point. Why? Because there's no Holy Spirit in there. If there's no Holy Spirit in there, what's there? It's the flesh, right? Let me ask you this question. If the flesh is over there, the flesh is alive and kink kicking to make you think, to make you make choices, to make you decide, to make you imagine. See, it doesn't take away free will. What are you talking about over here? The flesh is alive and kicking and it's functioning, it has the ability, it's not unable to, it has the ability to make choices, to make conscious decisions, to reject or to receive. But what it's dead in, it's dead in spiritually inside. Isn't that simple? That's more simple than you think. What in the world? Why do they have to make it that difficult? Are there people who are lost in sin and in the flesh who make decisions out of their free choice? Yes, they do. There are plenty... As a matter of fact, 
lost sinners, wicked people, have the ability and choice to make good, conscious decisions. Why don't you let that sink in for a while? Well, they can't do anything. Uh, they can't uh, make all these conscious decisions are spiritual. Are you kidding me? Don't you realize there are plenty of lost people? Even today, even today, but proven cases in the Bible where there were lost peoples who made spiritual right choices that supported the nation of Israel, that supported even the Christian church. You know why? Because they have what they call, what God ingrained every flesh. It's called a conscience. Okay, so they're dead spiritually. So what? That doesn't, that doesn't disable the conscience. You can't deny that. God gave every man a conscience. Look at Romans 2. Why do you think Paul called it the uh, why do you think Paul called the law as the law of the flesh, not the law of the spirit? Hmm. Look at Romans chapter 2. Verse 14. Romans chapter 2, verse 14. Look at this. It's a part of human nature, fleshly nature. Look at this. This is strong. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by what? Nature. Oh, is that what it said? Do by nature. Calvinists love to use the verse, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So a lost, natural, fleshly man cannot make spiritual decisions. It's impossible. He's, he's incapable. You're denying Romans 2, 14. The nature of not the law of the Spirit, but what? The law of the conscience. You can't deny that. That's a fleshly nature. Is that what it said verse 14? Yes. You're all born with that. These having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. How about that? That's why verse 16, you can't get away with it. You can't say, oh, when I rejected the gospel of Jesus, I was just incapable. No, God's holding you accountable. Verse 16, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. You can't get away. So notice that God holds you accountable for the decision you make with Paul's gospel, with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he inserted in your flesh, even though you're dead spiritually, in your flesh a conscience. Now use that on a Calvinist, Romans 2.14. That's nature. When he starts to use the verse in Corinthians, natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. He cannot, he cannot, he cannot. See, he's enabled to, and you go to Romans 2. Say, thank you so much, you prove my point. You prove natural man is fleshly, right? Don't take that back. And then go to Romans 2.14 and 15. 